positive feedback loop. Hi, welcome to Positive Feedback Loop. Today's episode... Wait, what's that? Who? Who? Who are you? I am Future Luis. I come from the distant future to give you a book you haven't written yet. Use it to make millions and save the world. This is amazing. Uh, I don't know what to do. Wait, is it okay for me to have this? I feel like this could create some problems. You know, but time and all. Oh, don't worry about that. I got a time paradox box. A what? Time paradox box. You keep all your paradoxes in there. No problem with time. Oh, that's handy. So what you're saying is if I put the, bo the book in here, it won't mess with time and I'll still save the world? Exactly. And the best part is, it's been sitting in your attic the whole time. The time paradox box. You've had it all along. By Menon. Well, that was weird. Anyways, welcome to Positive Feedback Loop. This is the show that gives you awesome life lessons that you can use anywhere and anytime. With myself, Luis, and my co-host, Stephanie. Hello, everyone. Unfortunately, Ray is not with us at this moment. We suspect he may be time traveling. That's which right. Which just so happens to be the topic of today. <laughs> So this all came about because I had a theory about a time-traveling professor, which, whether or not it's true, we'll never know. I don't want to divulge that information, just in case he goes back in time and makes me disappear. But let's talk about time travel. Mm -hmm. So Steph, how do you feel about time travel, whether it be <laughs> popular culture or reality? I think the topic come, came up for me, especially when I was watching Harry Potter, because Hermione... Time travels oh, so yes. that she can attend two classes at once because she loves both these classes and she can't give either of them up. Yeah, you're handed with a cosmic power, the ability to change any event in history, and mm -hmm. you choose to take an additional class in the curriculum. Which is kind of what I did this semester, so I guess <laughs> I relate in some way. Yeah, but you don't have the power to literally stop genocides or, I don't know, solve every plot problem in the Harry Potter universe with one handy device, the Time Turner. True. For, it's the Time Turner? That's, I think that's what it's called, yeah. Uh, for listeners who may not be aware, in Harry Potter there is a device, which I believe is called the Time Turner, which allows us uh, users to go back on their own time stream, and so long as they're not really interfering with themselves, they can go, they're just basically back in time, which is pretty handy, I'd say. It is the Time Turner. How yeah. did you know that? Because I remember ab random minutia sometimes. <laughs> So, have you traveled in time? Be honest. Forwards, mostly. <laughs> I would say. I've been on planes, so technically I've skipped forwards a little bit, too. Can I go back in time? Mm. I remember, actually, when I was flying home from a semester in the University of Queensland from Australia. Yes. And I flew out on July 4th, and I arrived on July 4th. That's traveling in time zones. A little yeah. bit different from traveling in time. Yeah. Time zones are actually pretty interesting, <laughs> though. There are some time zones that overlap in such a weird way because of different nations, whether they were, they respect them or not, or have, for example, daylight savings, whether mm. they have daylight savings or not. Arizona doesn't believe in it. Yeah, and there's in Arizona, for example, <laughs> you could try, you could have a route that goes through Arizona, but goes through a reservation in Arizona that does have daylight savings, and so right. you'd be going through. And then within Back that, and forth within yeah, time. There's like, I, I forgot exactly where it is, where you can go through technically five or six different times within a five minute period. Like it's something crazy like that. It's like That's within impressive. like six miles, you can just mm -hmm. have traveled through just an assortment of times. Right. But it's not, it's a little bit of a far cry from real time travel. Right. I mean, going to time zones, which is also not time travel, but to continue on that. Uh, Boston is so far out into the ocean that it actually should be the next time zone. Hmm. So it we tend to get darker before, right? Before the rest of the East Coast, really. Because isn't Boston pretty far out from, like, D.C., for example? 
I'm actually not sure. I hadn't heard that before. That's that's interesting. We need to pull up a map of the United yeah. States. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll throw that on the, in the, in the notes for listeners so they can find out whether, in fact, uh, Boston is the city out of time. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. We should call ourselves that. The city like of time. Well, New York is the, is the big apple. We could be the city out of time. Yeah, look. Here's a map of the United States. Our listeners cannot see anything. Yeah, of We course. can post it. And Massachusetts is quite farther out. East True. Yeah, actually. You're right. Yeah. Like D.C., right? I love how you're showing this on like an 1864 map. <laughs> that was the one that came up <laughs> on Google search. <laughs> You know, map of the U.S. and it's like here's the first map ever created. <laughs> there are dragons in the water. Even, yeah, the Louisiana Purchase hasn't been made yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there, there's just like a small Napoleon in the back. It's great. <laughs> but in terms of actual time travel, right? Getting back to the to the, the, to main the meat, subject, yes. the meat and potatoes of time travel. What is your favorite iteration of time travel in media? In media? Yeah, there's been a so lot of things. So there's this movie I like. Is the Lake House with Keanu Reeves, I think, and Sandra Bullock? Oh, where there's a magical, uh, like, like mailing thing. Yeah. Where they can like send <laughs> they messages send in time. They're like two years off of each other at all points, mm. and so they're in love with each other, and like, but they're at different times, and so. Anyway. I don't know. How you would figure that out and not think that it's just someone messing with you. If your first instinct is to think time travel and not. Annoying neighborhood kid trying to right, right. Then you may have to think about your use of Hawkins Razor. So, is the lake house really time travel though? Because I think that she waits. She she meets him out of sync with time, and I think they actually wait out the two years. I'm just thinking about why you wouldn't just open up the mailbox. And, like, open see what's up. happening. Like, if you open it up, <laughs> like, expand it. investigate? Yeah, yeah. And then, like, maybe you can open like, make it really big. Or, in fact, tell them, send me back lottery numbers. Right. Yeah, they did not take advantage of they that. They did not at all. No. no. They're too focused on their love. Ugh, love, am I right? Seriously. Ugh. You have the promise of huge financial rewards. In fact, <laughs> they could have prevented 9-11, probably. When was the movie made? I don't know. Maybe they couldn't have prevented 9-11. But they could have prevented some other stuff. Yeah. They could have definitely, like, this stopped back, some major crimes. This goes back to the idea that in all the media representations of time travel that we have, they're always focused on basically making their lives better, but not really... Oh, wait. What was the show where the cat would bring the newspaper? That was not time travel either. I have no idea but what you're talking about. There's a TV show where a cat would bring in the new, tomorrow's newspaper um, to this guy's doorstep. So he could see... This is more of like fortune telling than time travel. I have no idea <laughs> right. what show you're talking about. No, this was a popular show. Which will be in the notes. Have you... Okay, let me look up the show. I also want to point out that we're doing our own form of time travel here. In that I don't think either of us have slept <laughs> in a day. so true. So we may be a little loopy. So apologies to our dear listeners if you are having any difficulty following the thread of logic here. Because there isn't one. That being Early s- edition. I've never heard of it. So, TV series 1996 to 2000. Uh, the show was called Early Edition. And he gets tomorrow's newspaper today. He reads it, knows what's going to happen, and goes and saves people's lives. Oh, that's cool. That's an, interesting, that's an interesting take on that. I think for the most part, time travel stories tend to focus on either... If they do want to go back in time and save someone, it's mm-hmm. usually they're going to try to kill Hitler. And, like, that's, like, the one thing that, like, is acceptable time travel murder. No other major crimes that you're <laughs> trying to stop. Just killing Hitler, which, mm, I mean, it's hard to argue with killing Hitler. Right. Um, either that or it's all focused on making your own life better. So what is your favorite time travel movie since I've only thought of really, like, movies involving time? Oh, that's a good question. I, I like Primer a lot, but that's... Primer? Primer, yeah. Hmm. If you haven't seen it, it's probably one of the best takes on time travel. So basically, it's a bunch of guys that, and it's really complicated. It takes like eight watchings and a really (laughs) in-depth chart to figure out exactly what happened. But basically, it's a bunch of guys that basically create a time machine in a storage unit. But the time machine works by going back as long as you've stayed in the storage unit. So you have to physically spend time in the storage unit to go back that exact amount of time. So if you spend an hour in the unit, you go back an hour. Oh, but you just sit there? You just sit there. 
They'd be like, bro, this is chairs. A real movie. Yeah, this is a real movie. It's actually really good. <laughs> a lot of this. And it gets really dark, but mm. fantastic movie. One of the best takes on time travel I've seen. Really? Um, other other classics that may be a little campier, like Back to the Future, are also great. Um, but they don't really. They have, there's a lot of plot holes in there if you want to think oh, about yeah, time travel. Oh, yeah, Back to the Future is. Yeah, I mean, that's a classic. classic. Yeah. You can't argue with that. We should brought that up first. I'm surprised you brought up. What is it? Next edition? What are you... <laughs> hey, my mind works in... Remember you just said we did not get a lot of sleep from finals. So we wish we could time travel and get a lot more time to finish our final papers for class. Oh, yes. That's actually what brought us here. Um, just the thought yeah. of being able to have the time to do things. If you could time travel, hmm. where would you go back to? Now that you've already said that there is historical president and you have to think about the good of the world... What would you do if you had the opportunity to time travel? And let's yeah. make it interesting. Let's say you can only do it three times. Three times? Well, I don't want to say once, because then you'd have, you wouldn't be able to do anything for yourself. You'd have to... You, the moral choice would be to do something yeah. righteous. And Well, so I'm worried about going back and changing even the most horrific of events, because it would change then all of history after that. Well, you, you fall into a classic time travel paradox, right? Yeah. Do you have, is it a multiverse where going back just puts you in another track of history? Mm -hmm. Or is it a scenario where going back invalidates you're actually having gone back because now there's no reason for you to have gone back. Mm -hmm. And thus, you don't go back, thus having the event happen, and thus it can't, there's a loop there that you can't possibly meet. The one other classic time travel movie where they clearly don't affect the future is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Mm, yeah. <laughs> That, that's a good Where one. Where they do all sorts of crazy things, yeah. and it does not have any impact. But Yeah, they, they don't, they, I... don't they literally take death at one point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, death, they just hang out with death. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's definitely one take on time travel. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Consequence-free time travel would be pretty sweet. Right, like they just go back, get Genghis Khan, bring him in the future. Yeah, he's totally a chill dude, doesn't murder everyone. Right. Yeah, doesn't like take over the present. Where, what would you do if you had... Some time travel choices. Tourism, I'd say. <laughs> you just have fun. Well, I mean, I, I like you said, I'd mm -hmm. be too worried about actually like messing anything up. Right. You just be an observer. Even even like killing Hitler may cause an even worse thing to happen. Right. You don't There's know. There's no way to know. You don't know. So tourists. Yeah. I'd go back in time, answer some big questions, destroy some myths. You know that sort of thing. Yeah. Come back and gloat about it. I like that. Yeah. I think I would love to go back to Persepolis and see, like, the reign of King Darius and see That's a Xerxes. very specific one. Just to see, you know, how did the the Persians and Assyrians and Hittites live? Because you just don't have... Well, how long are you going to be there for? And also, hmm. here's a big question about time travel. Yeah. Are you just kind of staying outside of time or are you physically there? In what way? Like, am I In floating your... as a ghost observing or yeah. am I, like... I can physically, like, eat yeah, food. Yeah, and... because th those create two very different situations. Explain. Let's say you're physically back in time. Mm -hmm. How much money do you have on you? Dang. None. How, do you speak the language? Dang. You're making life really hard for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> How are you with eating food that hasn't been cleaned and had, no one has washed their yeah. hands? Yeah. What's your immune system like? So basically, I traveled back in time. I last about a day, and I die there. <laughs> <laughs> the further you go back in time, the more difficult it is to be a time traveler. Yeah, that's true. Because then you are less adept at actually dealing with the environment, the people, yeah. everything. And even what you're wearing is going to be really weird and weirder the more the farther back you go. Oh, yeah, they'll see a woman in pants and freak out. Well, I mean, they probably don't think about the fact you're wearing pants. It's not like a, I don't think they have that, that like... Mm -hmm. Where you're thinking, heck, if you go back to Rome, they'll be like, there's a person in pants. Who wears pants? <laughs> yeah. Only barbarians wear pants. We all wear togas. Yeah. The Romans didn't really care for pants until they started going up north and they realized cold air <laughs> tends to run through togas really nicely. <laughs> but ancient Romans, I'll take them on. Yeah. I don't see many of them around anymore. There's not, no ancient Romans around? No, yeah, no, I haven't seen any lately. That being said, <laughs> ancient Rome would be an interesting time to visit. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be able I to understand that. anything that's happening, mm -hmm. but... You could probably use some of your Latin. So there you could probably speak... What Latin? I mean, if you've studied Latin in high school or 
saying Latin in a true mass or anything. You'd sound like a really <clears throat> weird person because your Latin would be very different from right. how they actually spoke, but you could probably get by. Like, you could have some words here and there. Yeah, and you could probably, like, in. bring back some gold, and I'm sure you people would accept it as mm. currency. They'd be like, oh, you have gold. Okay, I, I can make something out of this. So what if you could plan your time travel? You know where you're going, you know yeah. what time period, you know what they value there. You know the clothes that you're going to bring? You, like, go to a, I don't know, a Ren fair, pick out some clothes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're going back into Shakespearean times, there's a lot of clothing right there, now available. I mean, mo- probably no one would have worn those, but, you know, you could probably get by. So, yeah, that's actually interesting. So, the f- the further back you go, the more difficult it becomes because we have less information that we can use to construct a facsimile of you as a person that could live in that time. Right. But I think the bigger issue is not so much the cultural one, but the biological one. Because that one's a lot harder to get around. The food that you'd eat. Yeah, not what just the food. What if you could pack a lunch? You're only there for a day. Not just the food. There's diseases that have disappeared since then. So you'd get to get immunized against things that haven't been around for 600 years. Yeah. And then on top of that, anything you're bringing... Which is like you're bringing advanced diseases that they are not immune to. I would just time travel in a hazmat suit. That won't look weird. <laughs> you will be on Ancient Aliens soon. <laughs> they will be very excited talking about how there's depictions of you in monoliths across the world. Mm-hmm. And how you built the pyramids yourself. Right. And brought advanced technology to the ancients. There you go. That's one way of getting on TV. That's true. Yeah. There will be a movie made about me someday. Yeah. Because I travel back in time in a hazmat suit. Perfect. I like it. Dear listener, I think this is a perfect spot to uh, take a break on. I'm a little confused, Stephanie. I think we already did the commercial. Are we supposed to have a break right now? I travel back in time. 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 Hey, dear listener. So, I don't know if you know this, but time travel is complicated. Did you know it's complicated? I didn't know it was complicated until I had the Time Paradox box. And because I have the Time Paradox box, I can tell you right now, talking about time travel on no sleep is very difficult. Yes, it is. (laughs) This is what I've learned very recently. And that's why I think it's very important that you reach out and you talk to us about the things that you care about with time travel. What would you do with time travel? I actually want to know, what do you find important? that you would go back and do. Do you care about the consequences of going back? Do you think it would matter? What if you're only creating an alternate dimension? What would you do in that scenario, Stephanie? Let's say you can go back in time, but you're not actually destroying everything in this world. You're only creating a new one. Ooh. Like a bifurcated world. Yeah. uh, basically Starting at whatever moment I visit. Yeah. I now create two futures. One that was already created yeah and then i go back and like stem off to another exactly oh so interesting well then i would go back to the the horrible tyrants of the past and kill them all will you pull out of your hands with killing tyrants or you know what maybe not killing tyrants that would be difficult because they probably have an army killing their babies you know just killing them as babies that's horrible I mean, they are tyrants. They murder millions. Well, I was thinking, if I'm traveling back in time, I actually know what they valued, and I actually know where those things are. So I can go back as more powerful. No, here's what you can do. Okay, what can I do? You can open up an orphanage. And I'm pretty sure this is the premise for a show already, that already exists, or something. What? Open up an orphanage of all the evil time babies. Oh! Take the babies from time. From all the different times. Yeah, take all the terrible babies. And raise them as my own. Yeah. As good, wonderful people. Well, they probably still will turn out cr- crummy. Just oh, dear. Just chances. <laughs> At least one of them is going to like, turn out only homicidal. If you, only if you believe in, like, fate instead of, like, you choose your destiny. Well, but there's also something called con- mental conditions. There's still psychopaths out there. Yeah. And many of them tend to be the horrible people from history. Right. Like, chemical conditions. Yeah. But, hey, you can give them the treatment they need. So that they don't yeah. go out there and rule the world. So or maybe I would millions. time travel with, like, because I don't really have the power. I may know where to travel back in time and what needs to be done, but I may not have the skills. And so maybe I need to bring a psychiatrist with me. This is like if you would travel to the moon, what would, who would you bring with you? Or like a deserted island? If you traveled in time, who would you bring with you? Probably a historian. Who Ooh, knew yeah. everything about that time? Mm-hmm. Since I'd probably be pretty out of my depth. And I just want to point out, I was right. This is a, this is a card game called Evil Baby Orphanage. 
<laughs> it exists. It's a it's a board game. It's a card game where you basically uh, play with uh, cards and use evil time babies against each other. Against each other? I think so. I don't know. This is a real game. This is a real game that exists. It's called Evil Baby Orphanage. I wow. have totally just ripped off this this property. Please well, don't. No, sue me. you just gave source credit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so don't make another game that the, the same premise. Make it evil baby high school or evil high school, rather than taking them as babies because yes. that's cruel. Their parents might miss them. You know, I mean, if they have parents, mm-hmm. don't say they necessarily do or mm-hmm. necessarily have good ones that would care. But taking them as babies is unnecessarily cruel. Right. But really, taking e- evil people at their most awkward oh. is just the best way to really shame them into being good people. Can you really shame someone into being good? Probably not. <laughs> This sounds this like is, a whole other podcast. This Speaking is what, of going back in time and creating an alternate universe, <laughs> we could have like one start to a podcast and end it in like five different ways. I think we do just create came up with our next episode. Talking about taking people at their most awkward and shaming them into being good probably means that I'm going to be the person that someone's going to time travel back in time and <laughs> shame into trying to be good. So I got that to look forward to. There's actually a theory that don't there is we can prove that there's no time travel because we haven't invented a time machine yet. There is a theory that you cannot travel back in time further than the first time machine. Why is that? If the, Let's say that you create a time machine by the idea of creating like a portal in time, right? Something that allows time space to bend mm-hmm. and then you have two hole, a hole on each side. Mm-hmm. So you will need to use a time machine to get to the time machine at a different point right, in the time machine's right. existence. Mm-hmm. I think this is the theory anyways. This is no sleep, Louise. Who's very fun at parties. And says so really weird things. No sleep, Louise thinks that's the theory. I, I suggest all our listeners uh, look up the theory because I can't possibly remember it. And time travel theory is very complicated, as we've established. Well, that is kind of an end-to-end principle of sorts. The whole process has to meet on both ends. So that means a time machine has to be in existence then and now. Yeah. And that's that the portal is, is between the endpoints. Well, it's very similar to the idea that we know there's no time travelers because Stephen Hawking says there isn't any because he tested it out. He He threw a gigantic party. He threw a huge party Mm -hmm. and invited any time travelers to show up. (laughs) I think he said like there were free drinks for them or something. Mm -hmm. And no one showed up. No time travelers showed up. Mm. Now that maybe might they didn't the, want to disclose their yeah, maybe, identities. Maybe they don't like Hawking. Maybe they're, they're just like, he's probably lame to party with. But, but think about it. If you were to, if somebody were to say, hey, we're having a party, and you, you know about it, you're in the future, you're going, I'm going to go back in time and go to that party. Then you've disclosed yourself to the past, who now knows to come after you in the future before you know you're going to be traveling in time. So you're being targeted without knowing it. Well, you don't need to give your identity away necessarily. You just well, if you're at a party, down. people see you. Yeah, but no one even showed pictures up. Pictures of you. No one even showed up saying they were a time traveler. Is the thing. But that's the point. I wouldn't say I'm a time. Oh, traveler. I see what you mean. Yeah, it's dangerous. Time travel is dangerous business. Yeah, you have to yeah. keep your identity secret. If you're a yeah. time traveler, it's like you're basically an FBI agent. This actually brings me to um, one of the other paradoxes that we were talking about earlier outside of the episode. And it's the, the information creation paradox. Hmm. So the way this paradox works is that, let's say you came up with an idea. This idea became a published paper and became very, very important and famous, right? Sort of like the theory of relativity. Right. Now let's say that future you, having all this knowledge about this idea, went back in time and gave you the idea that became this paper. Right. So you're writing an idea before it's time at this point. No, it's before you've come up with it. So you gave right. yourself the idea. Mm-hmm. But where did the original source for the information come from? Because now at this point, you never came up with it. You gave it to yourself. From the so, future, but now you don't have it in the future because you've given it to yourself in the past. No, you still have it in the future because you still made it. But the you future just, doesn't exist anymore because you've changed the future because you've gone back to the past. You haven't changed it. You just gave yourself the idea that you were going to have anyways. So then you always gave yourself the idea. You never actually came up with it. Mm. So then where did it come from? That's one of the things that makes it... That's one of the biggest paradoxes in terms of time travel back in time. One of, right. There's a lot of reasons why people say you can't travel backwards in time. You can only travel forwards. And that's just one of the paradoxes that kind of fits in there. Yeah. In terms of why that might not be truly possible. There's a lot of stuff to go in time travel. I think this is an episode... 
that there's no way we could possibly cover properly, especially as loopy as we are. We can't do this justice. Well, time travel is, you could bring in physics, you can bring in uh, philosophy. Mm -hmm. Culture, as we talked about, pop culture. Yeah, culture and... You know what would have loved this episode? Ray. Ray. I wonder what he's doing right now. I wonder what time he's in. Hmm. Since he's time traveling. Yeah. Wait, he's time traveling? Yeah, he is. He sent me a text from about 1569 yesterday. And now he's in, uh, looks like he's uh, over in uh, hanging out with Shakespeare right now. Did they have good reception back then? He said, time travel is my jam. <laughs> Smiley face. Oh, yeah, makes <laughs> sense. And I think with that, uh, dear listener, I think we have to take this to a close. Time travel is a topic that we honestly should revisit again. I think we probably will. Definitely. Because there's a lot there. And some, and it's, it's not been done justice by, by media in terms of the overall complexity of it. And honestly, it's understandable. I mean, when you take into account how difficult it is to portray everything that goes into making a time travel movie that makes sense logically, because nothing about time travel makes sense logically, right? without mm -hmm. destroying the, log the inherent laws of that movie... It, it, it's difficult. There's um, also a lot that hasn't been done. That, Like you're saying, there's gaps in the media portrayals because there's always a box you travel in or some sort of wormhole you have to jump in. But what if time travel were just you think it and you're there? Or well, the, the, why is been, there always a contraption that there have been initiates ones, it? There have been ones where it's, a, it's an affliction, I think. Where like you travel oh, back in yeah. time and involuntarily. That's another thing that they've done. That's true. What was it? The where time he just wife or something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. Like they're sitting in church or whatever and it's just like... He's gone. I never saw the movie, but or read I the book. Either, but, so. uh, I think it's the book. Yeah, but it's both. Yeah, I never, I never got into that. Mm. But there's a lot of different things that we could definitely talk talk about, and I think I want you, dear listener, to tell us one: if you could go back in time, you get three chances. What would you do? Where would you go? And would you have fun doing it, or would you just like pain yourself over the decisions that you made? <laughs> would you go out there and murder babies, or Open an orphanage. Or just go back in time and make different decisions. Who knows? Or, secondarily, what is your favorite time travel movie? We've covered a few here, but there's many more. And maybe it doesn't even have to be a movie. Maybe it's a game. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a baby, an evil baby orphanage game. <laughs> Who knows? So, let us know at pflpodcast.com. Send us a tweet at the PFL Podcast. Or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash pflpodcast. Yep, and we'll always be posting on the blog at pflpodcast.com, and you can comment there with any questions or topics you want us to cover. So thank you very much, and stay crazy. Stay crazy! Hours at least. Falling apart. Okay, bring us uh, back in. <clears throat> uh...